21st on growth rate, 2004 to 14 UPA, 6.82%, 2014 to 24 NDA, 5.84%. Jan Sinha, you want to respond to that? Would you uh, say that when it comes to growth, can the UPA claim that in their 10 years, growth was on an average basis better than it was during the last 10 NDA years? Or is that an unfair comparison given that there were two years marked by COVID? It's a thoroughly unfair comparison, Rajdeep, for three reasons. First, the UPA inherited an economy in very good health, growing at 8%. Uh, and then, of course, they trashed the economy going forward and they left the economy growing at less than 5% with inflation raging at 10%. So, number one, they trashed the economy on their watch. Number two, they didn't have to deal with a once-in-a-century pandemic, which is what we had to deal with with COVID. And number three, uh, the kinds of problems that they left us with, which is when we inherited the government in 2014, were very chronic, difficult structural problems that we had to resolve, which we resolved. And in fact, if you look at our record, as I said, we inherited an economy in the ditch growing at less than 5%. We have made it the fastest growing economy in the world right now. It was a fragile five economy on the UPA's watch. It is a top five economy now headed towards number three in the world. And if you really look at the underlying health of the economy, the structural factors that really determine whether we can sustain this growth, which is what you know, were tragically damaged uh, during the time of the UPA, each of those underlying parameters is very, very strong. If you look at CapEx numbers, if you look at job creation, if you look at investments in the private sector, all of these are looking very, very positive. And I'll make one last point, uh, Rajdeep. We are delivering better than 7% growth in a global economy that's growing slower than it has ever before. If we had the kind of tailwinds that the UPA enjoyed, we would be growing not just at 7%, we'd probably be growing at 9 or 10% right now. So that's what we have delivered, and that's why you saw the confidence today when we said that this is a Viksit Bharat ka budget. We are setting the framework for uh, Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji's third term. Shashi Tharoor, your response to what you just heard. First of all, Rajiv, your absolute number gives you the answer to begin with, that the UPA government did much better. But if you look at the current second term of the NDA, their average growth rate is a modest annual 3.5%. Now, yes, you can give them an excuse of COVID, but the fact is that India's post-COVID growth rate has been lower than that in Bangladesh, in Vietnam, and even in China, which has been going through a terrible series of economic setbacks. So let's not sit here celebrating growth figures. What's even more worrying to me is not just that the question of absolute growth. It's who's benefiting from that growth. Because if you look at figures, I mean, Giants rattled off a whole series of categories. I'll try and address some of them. If you look at incomes, where particularly the bottom of the pyramid, the annual growth rate of real rural wages has become negative. For the first time in this second, the last four years of NDA, whereas in fact, the first term, they had a very modest increase, much lower than the increase in rural wages during the Manmohan Singh government, which was um, uh, which is averaging over 7%. They managed 3% in their first term, and now they've got a negative growth. Uh, real rural wages in agriculture, minus 0.6% in the last four years, non-agriculture wages, minus 1.4%. There was a survey by Reuters this month, January 2024, in which the Indian population says 85% say they've had no increase. 44% say that their salaries have gone down, they're earning less than pre-pandemic. 41% say they've got the same, nothing better. Only 15% of Indians have reported an, an increase in their incomes in the second term. Uh, the poorest 20% of households in our country saw income levels shrink 52% since 2016, since before demonetization. And but are you, willing, are you willing to accept, Dr. Tharoor, the premise that the government has that they inherited an economy which they said was within the fragile five economies of the world? Today, India is the fifth largest economy in the world. So the government, the Modi government is saying we've achieved a turnaround in the last 10 years. As economists will tell you, given the growth in our population, growth into becoming the fifth and now soon the third and maybe one day even the second largest economy is inevitable as a function of your size of a population generating some sort of economic activity. What I'm concerned about is where that's coming from. From 2016 to 2021 in India, 
the top 20% of our population have seen almost a 40% rise in their income growth, whereas the bottom 60% has seen a negative income growth. This is the real problem. The government says improbably that they pull 25 crore people out of multidimensional poverty, but yet 80 crore people are receiving free food grains, which doesn't exactly suggest that people have stopped being poor. We are also looking at a government whose figures, sadly, have become totally unreliable, Rajdeep. One of the sad things about this government is that India used to be respected worldwide for the reliability of its statistics. Now those statistics coming out of Niti Aayog and of the government are not being trusted. Consumption expenditure surveys were not even done for eight years from 2014 to 2022. And this national multidimensional poverty index rests on highly dubious and debatable assumptions. So there's a real worry. Let me say on the comparison with UPA, since you wanted me to address that particularly, 27.1 crore Indians were lifted out of poverty, according to UNDP, between 2005 and 2014. And they said that the poorest 40% in India had the greatest relative development during this period, whereas under the BJP, if you turn to World Bank figures, 230 million Indians slipped into poverty during the pandemic. Nearly 80% of the total number of people in the world who slipped into poverty in 2020 were those in India. 